Hey guys, welcome to another video. I guess this is actually the first video. All right, what are we going to do today? So we're going to go over this article. I'm going to demo it. We are making a Windows container using NanoServer as the base image. All right, so NanoServer is great for Windows containers, mainly because it's much light, much lighter, much smaller than Windows Server Core. So I highly recommend it for your apps. Um, we're going to make a dummy app in .NET and then just run it on this container. So what do you need to do this? First, you'll need um, Docker Desktop installed on a Windows Enterprise machine or a Windows Pro or a Windows Educational. Um, unfortunately, Windows Home will not work because Windows Home does not have this certain feature called Hyper-V. Uh, so, to get your hands on an enterprise machine really quick, you could make one through Azure Portal. This one is an example here, um, just Microsoft Windows Desktop, and then you can just RDP to it. So, I don't know if you noticed that, but this is my virtual machine that we just saw through Portal. So, we have that. Uh, we have Docker Desktop installed. Uh, we can even just like really quick check on something. So here it is, Docker Desktop. Uh, if you right-click it, you can change a bunch of settings. Um, it's now, right now, set to Windows. So that's why this has switched to Linux, because we're currently on Windows, which is what we want. And the Hyper-V feature is enabled on this machine. Uh, we've also installed here the .NET 6.0 SDK, which we'll use to create the app. And, uh, yeah, .NET app. So here we go. First of all, you just need, um, let's make a little workspace for ourselves. So let's go to demo. Okay, there's nothing in here. But if we go grab this first line of code here, what it does is creates um, an app for us in this folder. And it's going to be called just app. So yeah, now if we look in here, we see an app. And I'm actually going to open this current directory in Visual Studio Code so we can browse a little bit easier. But um, anyways, yeah, so here's, you know, app. And then there's a program file in here. Uh, it just says, hello world. So, yes, let's, uh, let's go back to the article. Okay, so we're going to edit the app just a little bit and make it sleep for like a thousand seconds, but make it print a line every two seconds. Um, to mimic a container because some most of containers like run continuously or like are serving stuff and yeah so we kind of want to mimic that okay next we build the app so we go i guess we can just open it up in here powershell into this terminal so you can ignore that it's just a setting i have not working but anyways so we're gonna build the app here and you'll notice in the files Oh, what did I do? Oh, not contain April. oh, sorry. We need to change the directories to the app, and then we build this app. Yeah. So you'll notice up here there will be some new folders which contain the binaries to this app. Um, yeah. There we go. Bin. That's the one. Uh, so, like in bin, what is their release? There's all the stuff. Like, we'll be using that eventually. Let's just wait. Okay, so bin, nice. So, bin, publish, and then here are the binaries. So, especially this one .NET, .docker, DLL. That's the one we'll need later. Uh, okay, next is creating a Docker file. So, what is a Docker file? Well, Essentially, a Docker file is just a set of commands that Docker uses to build a container image. So in our demo folder, we're going to create Docker file, no extension. And let's just paste in exactly what's here already. And I will explain what this is. So first of all, we just specify which container image we want to use as our base container image. And uh, what does that mean? So basically, um, 
this space container image is Microsoft's PowerShell, like comes with PowerShell, right? So I like it just because if you need to run PowerShell commands as part of your setup, you're able to do that. And um, it's comes with nano server, so I mean, it's like really small to begin with anyways. But yeah, you can just play around. There are a lot of these out there, so like another alternative might have been uh, where is it? Down here. Dot .NET ASP.NET. Uh, this one does not come with PowerShell, but it does come with the .NET runtime to to actually run the application. So you kind of just pick and choose. But for our demo, I will use PowerShell as the the base, and then I will install uh, .NET here as part of the creation. Yeah. So, uh, well, first of all, number, line seven. This is just to make PowerShell the default. Okay, and then these commands here, this will install .NET into this directory that you can just create. Uh, it doesn't, not, not anything special. And um, next, we copy binaries. So we're going to copy these, these binaries we created for our app, these ones here into the container image at location C users example app. Yeah, so I mean there's uh, it's just kind of how Docker works. Like you can copy binaries in or you could even copy the source code in and then build the source code into this container image directly. No need to copy. Kind of depends. Um, okay, finally we as part of the Docker file we just go change directories to users example app and the main entry point of our container is this here we basically specify we want to use net runtime which we installed previously up above on lines 10 through 12 so that's our main entry point and we will pass the binary of our application as an argument to the net runtime which the net runtime just interprets that as basically run my app, like run this application. All right. So let's go to the article. Okay. So that's basically, I just explained this part here. All right. So now we want to build the Docker image. So let's go in here. Um, to do this, you want to be at the same level as Dockerfile. So like here we go build the image okay so it's gonna pull down the base image it's going to run this as an administrator because you want your containers to be running as administrators so that basically like for example line 10 we or line 11 we download a file and then line 12 we run the file um, if you were not running as administrator you could lose permissions, like you wouldn't be able to actually run the file. So, anyways, okay, we built the Docker image. Let's go back. What's next? Um, yeah, this part, just make sure you're on Windows containers, make sure you have a enterprise machine or something that has the Hyper-V enabled. Oh, and finally, we can run this image and see what it does. Like, this is the application. So, you know, actually this is the final product like what what is your application going to do um, this for ours is going to do this uh, just prints hello world in a minute I guess and then it will loop and yeah hello world and it sleeps and it sleeps yeah so that's and then I don't really know how to exit this for some reason but let's just trash that but uh, yeah so like that's how you run the docker image Finally, I do want to show you one last thing. If you need to debug and such, you can interactively run PowerShell inside the Docker image to debug stuff. For example, um, like if you need to run a script or you want to see some output text file or like some logs, I don't know. You run this command, this Docker run with the entry point specified as PowerShell. And now if I directory in here, we can see the binary there. You know, we see, like, we can just browse around. Like, there's nothing else in here. Oh, .NET install. We can go look at that. What's in there? 
Uh, we see the version. Let's look at that. What's in there? Okay, like we see all this stuff. Like if we need to go further into the Docker container, check out what's happening, you are able to do that using the PowerShell base nano server. So yeah, and uh, all this code, by the way, is on this GitHub. You can check it out yourself. You can re redo the demo we just did. But thanks for watching. Hope it helps. And uh, yeah, have a great day.